All right, guys, so group chat's going to start now. We will start, uh, we'll kick it off. So a lot of you guys uh, have been asking around in the paid eBay phone flipping group. Obviously, you guys are all members and everything. eBay phone flipping is something completely different from direct selling. And I want to teach you guys something, uh, just kind of business economics we're going to talk about here and just scaling and how like a business economy works and, you know, why, in the, why there's value in having a network of people that you can sell to over eBay. And I just want to basically show you guys why it's important to basically follow the trend. And by trend, I don't mean that y'all should go out and, you know, start vaping and, uh, I don't know, start ripping holes in the back of your jeans pockets. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that lately. Um, I keep seeing girls on Instagram. Latest trend is uh, to rip holes in the back of their jeans instead of the front. So um, it's kind of funny. But um, <laughs> what I'm getting at by following the trend is, is if the millionaires are doing it, we should be doing it too. You should be doing it. There's absolutely no reason. If the guy out there that lives in a trailer wants you to start doing something, but the guy next door that owns the trailer court tells you not to do it, who are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the guy that lives in the trailer or the guy that owns the whole entire trailer court? You guys want to grow, expand, you want to scale, you want to do more money every month. Well, this is how you're going to do it. So I want to talk to you guys about that direct selling mastermind group. There's like 25 students now from our phone flipping group that are in there and they're all the top phone flippers in the eBay phone flipping group. Now direct selling is a little bit different. You acquire the phones in a similar way, but direct selling in itself is a little bit different. So first off, let's talk business economics. Let's talk about why you can scale more with this business model than you can on eBay. So, I'm just going to write up here for you guys. So on eBay, guys, let's say you've got, I don't know. Hold on one second. So we'll do eBay versus direct selling. Now, you guys are more than welcome to give feedback in the chat as we do this. I want you guys to tell me in the chat right now, for those of you guys that are kind of here in the group chat, what do you guys think the main difference is between eBay and direct selling? Like, what let's direct selling what what in direct selling allows you guys to scale faster than on ebay what are some of the major points that you guys are thinking of maybe on the top of your head so i know a lot of you guys are curious about this there are more millionaire i'm gonna write millionaire we'll just write millions there are more millions made with direct selling of electronics or phone products than there probably are on ebay and there's several reasons for that now reason number one let's say that you are like most people um, even me. I mean, sure, I have a decent amount of cash laying around at all times, but not many people have 50 grand laying around that they could just let it sit and not do anything. So the problem with eBay is, let's say the average guy starts with, uh, let's say the average guy starts with like five grand, and five grand is not bad by any means. If anybody's got five grand out there where you could buy five thousand dollars worth of phones and sit on it for two weeks, that's awesome. Like, good for you. So $5,000 guys, right? You got $5,000. And with this $5,000, let's say you're gonna buy, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Uh, let's just say you buy like four iPhone XS Maxes, okay? So you buy four XS Max. So four XS Max, you guys know what those are. We'll still put an iPhone right there. Now on eBay, let's say your time frame to sell all four of these iPhone XS Maxes is, uh, let's say eBay, the time frame is two weeks. Sorry, this is gonna get a little messy here, guys. So the time frame on eBay to sell is two weeks. So this guy right here that only does eBay phone flipping, he's got $5,000 to start with. However, the guy's got two weeks. Like he's gonna sit on his product for two weeks. That's a lot of time. So if all you've got is $5,000 to invest, this is all you're gonna ever do because you only got five grand. Now, after this guy sells his 4XS Max, he might get to 5,500 in capital or he might get to 5,800 in capital. Richard said in the chat, speed wins, absolutely. So the guy who's doing direct selling, let's say he's also got $5,000, okay? So check this out. So he's got $5,000 and he also gets four iPhones, uh, four XS Max, right? So I want to make sure you guys can see that. I hope you guys can see it. Um, so four iPhone XS Max, right? Now, the difference is this guy right here, this guy sells these in five minutes, okay? 
Now check this out. Because this guy is in the group and in our network, and for anybody else out there that's doing this, that's actually a direct buyer that might already be doing millions in sales, this is why these guys do this, and this is why nobody wants to give this information out, is because these phones are now sold in five minutes. This guy made the same profit as the eBay guy, and on top of that, guess what? eBay guy sold all four phones on eBay. However, there's a variation up here that you have to also factor in, and I know you guys can't see this arrow, but let's take this arrow and drag it down here. eBay guy got one return. So now eBay guy has not only sold four phones in two weeks, but he also now has a return. So eBay guy is gonna sit on another phone. And now that phone that he got a return has to come back to him. And the eBay seller that bought the phone, or the eBay buyer that bought the phone from him, is very rude about the return. He's slow with the shipping label. And the eBay phone comes back and it takes one week to get back. So now this $5,000 is potentially tied up like obviously he's got some of his capital back, but he doesn't have this full $5,000 guys to invest back. That's the problem. So eBay comes back and you know how eBay is with returns. They don't really care about you or me, right? And now you've got one phone back and you have uh, another $1,000. I apologize if this is sloppy. So here's what I'm getting at, guys. eBay guy sold four phones in two weeks. Now he's got a third phone, so now he's got basically three weeks back into it because the eBay guy only sold three phones without returns. Now we're three weeks into this $5,000 investment, and this guy has another phone sitting there that's potentially worth 1000 bucks. So this guy still has money tied up. He's still dealing with return and he hopes to God that somebody doesn't return any of these other iPhone XS Maxes that he sold on eBay. Now this guy who's direct selling down here, guys, he's got a sweet $5,000. He sold all four of those phone in five minutes. He made, let's say $600 profit, probably would be more in a real situation, but he made $600 profit and what's cool is as soon as those phones gets to the direct buyers or any of the direct buyers in the mastermind group that we have, everything's kosher. You're going to get a text message, you're going to get a phone call, or you're going to get a Facebook message saying, all's good, my friend. Please get me some more phones. That's how my direct buyers work. That's how the network of the group works. And that's why it is valuable. So yesterday, I wish I had the uh, tote in here. It's actually outside locked in my truck still. I have a tote of phones that I bought yesterday. I bought over... 45 iPhones in one bid. I'm gonna make $6,000 on that. You know what I'm gonna do? They are not going on eBay, absolutely not. They're going right to a direct seller. The reason being is I don't want returns. I don't wanna to have to deal with 45 returns on 45 different iPhones. And by returns, obviously, I'm a professional. You guys are professionals. You've all taken the course. You guys all know what you're doing, but what I'm getting at is I don't want to potentially risk 45 or more returns on eBay because we all know how eBay buyers are. They will scam you. They will, you know, they'll do whatever. They'll, they'll message you um, subliminally trying to basically play out a return like, oh, did the phone come with a charger? They'll say that after they get the phone, trying to like bait you into saying, oh yeah, I thought I sent one. Then they'll open up a case saying, not as described, then they'll send you back a box of rocks. And then eBay will say, well, we have to protect our buyers. So you know what? I'm sorry, sellers, but we're gonna screw you over. Now, I'd love to swear, but I don't believe in profanity. I always think there's a more intelligent word to use than profanity, but you guys know what I mean. The eBay return starts, you get F-U-C-K-E-D over. And nobody likes that. So I'm trying to give this guys to you like Dan Locke style. I'm trying to give you guys 100% transparency. This is what I've been trying to teach you guys. This is what I've been getting at. This right here is not a scalable business. eBay is not scalable. You can scale to 20, 30,000 a month, but after that, you need to get into this. When you've made four or $5,000 in profit in eBay phone flipping, it's time to up your game and go into something else. Just like people who start on Shopify, typically upgrade or invest in a course to go to Amazon drop shipping or Amazon private labeling because they want to sell with Amazon. Shopify is huge, but Amazon is probably bigger. So that's how it works, guys. It's all about investing in your business. So I, for one person, know that I invest all the time. It's kind of funny. I just bought this book the other day. 
um, which is really hypocritical because of the fact of my name. I should have read this book a long time ago, but I have watched this guy's movie. I watch all his little Facebook ads and everything. I love this guy. His name's Jordan Belfort. For those of you guys that haven't, you guys should go and get this book, The Way of the Wolf. It's sales and persuasion. And the guy's a straight shooter. He's just like me. Um, he went to jail at one time, had an all-time low. This guy actually went to prison. Thank God I never went to prison. But completely all-time low. And now look, he's got a best-selling book. There was a movie made after him. I mean, he does a ton in sales. But what I'm getting at is there are hoops to go through in business. Like you might think that you know it all, but you don't. Um, so, you know, it, it's best to learn from somebody rather than hitting rock bottom like that guy or like me. Like I hit rock bottom before I started doing all this. Um, and, and it really changes you. People change for two reasons. It's either because they want to or because something causes them pain. And it's much better to change because you want to rather than um, somebody to cause you pain or you to cause yourself pain. So... Let's see here. Rico says, how do websites work with direct selling? Like how beneficial is it? Uh, Rico, I'm going to unmute your mic. Uh, I'm just kind of curious what you mean by that exactly. How do, how do um, like websites play a factor in, into the direct selling? Like you mean the buyback websites or? Yes. Yeah, the buyback websites. What, what role does it play? How is it beneficial? Like, Okay. Yeah. So obviously buyback websites. So something uh, Rico just asked, there is another thing in the mastermind group that I am offering. I have a member in that group that does $800,000 a year with a buyback website. Now that is a crazy amount in sales. I don't know exactly what his profit margins are. However, I do know that they are probably pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, once you get to $800,000 a year, one can basically assume that you're making pretty good profit. You know, when it comes to uh, taxes, guys, the IRS, no matter how many deductions you have, when you get to a certain amount of income, everybody, the IRS actually assumes that you made decent money that year and you will get charged taxes whether you like it or not. Because the IRS assumes when you have a certain gross amount of income, there is no way that that person is not making money. It's kind of the IRS's way of saying like, hey, we're not going to audit you, but we know you're making money, so you need to pay up. Um, just something to kind of think about. But as far as buyback websites, let's talk about buyback websites. So here we go. Sorry, it's a little bit streaky. I don't have my black or my whiteboard formula to clean that off. So buyback websites, guys. Let's talk about it. Uh, welcome for whoever just joined. There's a lot of people in here now. Um, so buyback websites, Josh asked, how do they help? So one, a buyback website, same with direct selling, it's going to help you scale. So if you have a successful buyback website, it's going to help you scale because once your site is all set up and running, let's just say, let's just say the buyback website gets you, let's say it gets you, I don't know, let's go low. Let's go two to six phones a week. So two to six phones a week, right? So two to six phones per week. And let's just say that two to six phones per week, let's just say it's like, I don't know, let's just say it's $300 per profit. Um, $300 profit as in like six phones, 300 bucks profit. Now this could be low, this could be high. But let's just say that. So 300 bucks per profit per week. So now we've got 300 per week on profit. So that's gonna basically equal out guys to end up being $1,200 profit per month. So $1,200 profit per month. So that's pretty slick. Now, how this helps you scale is while your website's doing this, you're gonna be down here with your Craigslist ads. So your Craigslist ads, your Facebook ads, and your mobile app ads. And I'm telling you guys all this stuff because this is the exact same stuff I do. And that's why nobody wants to sign up for a phone flipping course in Wisconsin. Everybody knows I crush it. Even if I don't display all information for everybody, like I don't always tell everybody, hey, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But today I wanted to give you guys absolute transparency on what I'm doing. And I started doing this about eight months ago. The reason why I haven't told anybody about it because obviously I want to test all these methods and make sure it's legit and it is legit. Um, but that being said, so this buyback website, guys, is generating us $1,200 profit per month. Now, the website only cost us $250 to set up, and that is 100% factual. The guy that I have in the mastermind group will give you guys an insane and awesome deal, 
and build you a whole buyback site for $250 and give you guys onboard training, meaning video training to teach you guys how to run your buyback website. Um, let's say the buyback website costs, let's just say it costs $100 a month. Now, I don't believe that's true because obviously once you get a domain name and the website set up, it's going to be more like 10 bucks a month. Let's just say it's 100 bucks a month. So basically, with the equation of 1200 profit and $100 a month and a one-time setup fee of $250, this website, guys, is essentially going to basically profit $850 its first month. There is no real businesses out there that profit their first month. Most business owners lose money in the first year of business something to kind of consider. So that is how a buyback website helps you scale. It allows you to take in phones from areas that you don't live in. Obviously, you can't drive to New York if you live in Wisconsin, or if you live in California, you can't just drive to Texas every day just because you feel like going and buying some phones from Texas, right guys? So Craigslist helps you scale in the fact that, or uh, Craigslist and Facebook and mobile apps help you scale along with a buyback website. It's just another big tool in the world of phone flipping and scaling and then going into direct selling. So the point is, Rico, is basically you end up making 1,000 to 1,100 bucks a month. Now let's say once you do that, you invest half of that back into your website. Let's say you do some website ads. Maybe uh, next month you'll end up getting 10 phones per week. So it's all about scaling. It's all about leveraging your money and basically just making more money with your money. And it's also about time efficiency. It's much more efficient to have somebody go through a buyback website. So we will write uh, time efficiency here. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. Sorry, we're going like a million miles a minute, guys. Um, so we'll do time efficiency. So if we do time efficiency and we have this buyback website, this frees us up to do more of this Craigslist, Facebook, and mobile app ads. It frees us up to meet more people in our area while we're still making money from other areas. So a buyback website gives us time efficiency. Scale, it gives us scalability. Part of my writing there in the C. So time efficiency, scalability, and then allows us to focus on other areas. There is no other way to buy phones in Texas and live in California. There's just no possible way. So that is why you want to get into direct selling and do the buyback website. So Richard says, how would you handle payment and shipping on website? Um, Richard, let me unmute you. Richard, you have a website, don't you? And uh, okay, yeah, I was making sure I was off mute. Yeah, uh, I actually do not. I do not have a website. I've been looking okay. at getting one. That's probably, well, this is probably the next step for me. I guess let me ask you, and I'll ask you on the spot. That way this isn't rehearsed because this is completely random. And I love doing at random questions, guys. Just like if you guys noticed when I bought that bulk lot of phones yesterday, when I met up with the guy, his name was Axel. I said, Axel, I said, so I don't want any funny business here. I'm here to do clean cut business. I said, if I open this tote of phones and I pick a phone that's four rows in and three phones down, and I, am I going to find an empty box? He said, no. So I went in, I picked a phone from random. I picked another phone from random. I picked like three phones from random and I laid them out on the table, right guys? I opened each one of them up. Each one had a phone in them. Everything was all good. So that told me I don't need to go and check every single phone out in this tote because this guy's not here to screw me. Now, why I'm asking Richard this guy's on the spot is I didn't know Richard was going to show up to my group chat tonight. The special thing about Richard is Richard took the course. He hit 30000 a month. Richard's a smart guy. He invested in the mastermind group. And I want to ask Richard on the spot, has direct selling helped you scale? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I started buying like sealed iPhone XS Max once I started seeing the, the, the difference in the amount I could get paid from direct buyers, like almost instantly. Exactly. So I mean, it was like, I didn't even care about the margins because I also had the capital. I mean, if I could make say $80 per phone, if you bring me two, three of them at once, I'm taking them all day. Well, exactly. Right. Yeah. And not to mention when you pay your buyer, when you pay your sellers more, like when you pay your sellers more, even though most of these people are desperate for money and you know, sometimes it's, it's very hard to look at somebody when you're a business person and say, man, this person is kind of dumb. These people are a lot smarter than we actually give them credit for. I mean, they're the ones out there hustling, getting in the, these, all these phones and then selling them to us like a monopoly. But the point is if you have a direct buyer, you can work off a price list. It gives you guys uh, more buying power, and when you guys pay higher, it encourages people to go out and get more phones. 
But what I'm getting at is as far as, you know, the buyback website, how payment and shipping works and all of that, Richard's doing direct selling right now. And as you just heard from him, it's been a huge benefit to him. He's doing 25 to 30,000 and hoping to do even more in the next coming months. So what I'm getting at is you got to like acknowledge when it's time to scale, when it's time to invest and time to basically grow yourself and your business. As far as a buyback website, um, payment and shipping is pretty much handled through PayPal. Uh, the guy that is in the group, We'll hook you up with all that. And Richard, what I was basically getting at is since you are in the mastermind group, I can connect you with him after the group chat tonight and I can put you in a conversation with him. I'm sure he can answer all those details for you. Um, but the one thing that I have noticed that I would like to speak about payment and shipping when it comes to buyback websites, guys, when these people go on to our buyback website, so we'll just put buyback website up here since we're talking about it again. Buyback website. We, these are random, random sellers. So if we pay them through PayPal, there's no chance in H-E-L-L -L that these guys are ever going to be able to open a case against us and win. You send every package or make them send every package with, uh, you know, just USPS tracking, you're never going to probably lose a case. Like if somebody sends you an empty box, you have such a great history with PayPal showing that you pay people on time, you ship on time, and then you've got the eBay reputation. PayPal looks at all that. PayPal is a little bit easier to deal with rather than eBay guys. So, I mean, as far as shipping and payment, once the payment system and the shipping gets integrated to the website um, with the guy who does that in the mastermind group, it's pretty much all upwards from there. You, you have a very low risk of getting scammed. In fact, I would almost say, you have a better chance of getting scammed in person than you do on the website due to the fact that if you pay, say, $300 for an iPhone 8 Plus, if that iPhone 8 Plus gets to your business from your buyback website and it's not as described, you just open a case on PayPal and you're probably going to win because PayPal is going to see, whoa, this guy's a legit business and he does tons of transactions every day and never has problems. Now there's one person that has a problem with them. Chances are it's a problem with that person, not the business. So as far as uh, shipping, I'm pretty sure he has it automated, Richard, to where it prints out a shipping label to their address, like they enter in their address and it prints them off the label and then they ship the phone to you, which is really slick. Um, let's see here. I'm just reading some of your guys' chats in here. Rico says, now, do you only recommend selling direct buyers the new phones or what if someone has a 6S Plus cracked or iPhone X cracked? The nice thing about the direct buyers in this group is, so I have a network of them. There's one buyer in the group that pays really, really high for new devices. There's another buyer in the group that pays high for used devices. There's another buyer in the group that will buy locked, cracked, broken, whatever, doesn't matter condition. So there's a bunch of different buyers and you can kind of work with whoever fits your buying style. If you get more new phones, well work with guy number A that buys new phones and offers a lot of money, right? So that's something to consider. Um, Brian says, just got paid right now. Awesome, Brian. Brian is also in the direct uh, buyers group. Um, Brandon says it allows you to set a set a price and quickly shoot prices for multiple items. Absolutely. Another thing with direct selling guys, you know exactly what you're going to get paid. That's another big thing that I want to bring up. Thank you, Brandon, for actually saying that Brandon is also in the direct buying group that I've put together in the network of people. So this is eBay phone flipper. So eBay phone flipper. That's only taking eBay courses. He basically talks to a customer and eBay prices are ranging from 850 to 950 plus he's got 10% in fees right so eBay phone flipper gets an offer or gets a customer that wants to sell an iPhone XS Max well the eBay phone flipper has to offer like 650 because he's not sure if the item's going to sell for 850 or 950 because even with doing 3 lookups on eBay trying to figure out a relative price of what they're going to go for, that doesn't always mean that that's exactly what it's going to sell for. Not to mention you've got fees and scams. So let's consider fees and then let's consider, let's consider, uh, let's consider a 5% scam rate because I would say about 5% eBay transactions result in a return or something really dumb happens. So let's just say that. So he pays, he wants to pay $650 and the customer, we're just going to say customer is C. So we write C here on the board. Customer is like, nah, your price sucks. Your 650 sucks. 
Now the guy down here that's in the direct selling group that's got literally like 15 direct buyers to say, hey, how much can you pay for this? The direct guy, direct buyers, he says, you know what? My direct buyer will pay up to, my direct buyer will pay up to 875. So this guy knows he's gonna get $875. So you know what he can do to this guy? He can literally crush the eBay guy because he's gonna shoot back to the customer down here again, we got C. He's gonna say, you know what? I can pay you $800 cash because the direct buyer guy knows he's getting 875. He's paying 3% in fees if he does it over PayPal. If you ship first, by the way, direct buyers group, you pay zero in fees. And he also knows for a fact he's gonna make $75 profit. Now what this guy just did, he not only crushed and stole this guy's business, but now this customer knows that this guy pays the most, this guy's gonna come back to this guy. He's not ever even gonna text this guy. So when you're an eBay phone flipper and you're going against people out there that direct sell, you might as well just close up shop, or like I said, learn that you have to invest in business and learn that you have to grow. If you can't grow in business and you can't reinvest, you don't have a business anymore, you have a hobby. So that is kind of the point I wanted to get across to you guys tonight, why it's so important to think about that stuff. Thank you, Brandon, for bringing that up. By the way, that was awesome. It uh, stumbled me onto a great point here. Rico said, let's see, what with these articles, too, with people getting nabbed for being accomplices of buying new phones? So, Rico, I did read that article that you were talking about. Um, group chat is running a little long tonight, guys, but that's okay. But something to consider is when you see people getting in trouble for buying like bad phones, that's because those people are using stolen identities and doing really bad stuff. I do not promote buying phones from somebody who has a stolen identity or stolen plastic or anything like that. And if you think that somebody is doing that, stop buying phones from them. The article that Rico is referring to in Arizona, three guys were busted for basically trafficking phones. And I read the article and what it said is the guys were buying phones from people who were buying uh, stolen identities off of the deep web. For those of you guys that don't know what the deep web is, it is also referred to as the dark or deep web. It is a private internet browser and people do very shady things on it. That is something I do not ever advise from. And most direct buyers that are really legitimate, they will not buy stolen or blacklisted phones. Some do just to get them off the market, but most don't. <coughs> Brian says, prices have been going down a lot lately, losing a lot of phones. Personally, what should I do? Brandon says, I need to connect with that guy as well. I'm currently designing a buyback website and need help. Absolutely. Well, cool, guys. Um, as far as your question goes, Brian, get with me after the group chat. You are also in the mastermind group. I do have a new direct buyer that I just ended up meeting up with and he pays the highest prices for new sealed phones. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, this guy's like $10 off of Hong Kong prices. So that's pretty crazy. But anyways, guys, unless anybody has any immediate questions about either just eBay phone flipping or about direct selling and business economics and talking about scaling, um, I think we're going to conclude tonight's group chat. We're coming up on like 35 minutes here. So Brandon says, I do got a question real quick. What's up, Brandon? I'll unmute you. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, you bet. Okay. Um, I actually have, I have a uh, brand new iPhone X. It's open. It's got the plastic on it. It's all good. Uh, I checked it out, uh, reset it and all the buttons don't work. So, uh, a lot of, a few guys were telling me that I can like slap my iCloud account on it, take it to Apple, and they'll do a swap because of the warranty. Have you that, done that before? I have not done that before, but that is something uh, to talk about. And I, let's make this topic public to the group. That is very true. So right now, guys, Apple has acknowledged that there is a problem with the iPhone original iPhone X screen. And what Apple has been doing, guys, is they have been offering people free refunds or free screen replacements. So if you do get a phone like that, now I'm not really sure, I guess, where my ethics are on that because obviously it's not your device. You could either cut the loss on it and sell it as is, or yes, you probably could put your iCloud on it and go into Apple and they would probably give you a new screen. Now, I guess where ethics come into play is, yeah, it's not your original device. However, you did purchase the device. I so bought it, yeah. You legally, do, you legally do own it now, correct. And since Apple is offering the warranty and it's now your phone, whether it's for resale or not, you should 
be able to go in and take that phone in and get the screen replaced. So personally, um, you know, I think if I got screwed on something like that and you paid for it legitimately and it's not a stolen phone, then I would, uh, I would go into Apple, put your iCloud on it and go get your screen replaced. Okay. So, All right. Yep. See how it goes. Let us know in the group too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go do it tomorrow and, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, you know, tell what happens. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it should go good for it. I've seen a couple articles on that. Just an FYI, guys, watch out for original iPhone Xs with defective screens or buttons um, or them just not being responsive. So uh, Brian said he's got a question also. Hey, what's up, Brian? I just unmuted you. What's up, my man? Hey, Luke. Um, I just have a quick question sure. um, about uh, Facebook ads. Do you do those? I want to like somehow, because it's kind of hard to target people who want to sell phones it's not like let's say selling t-shirts because you can just target people who like right shirts of a certain like let's say cats right but phones right. it's a little tricky because how do you find somebody who's like looking for cash that has a, a iphone you know so right do you, do you have any like tips like do you do you do facebook ads or like yeah you know? Yeah, I can give you some tips on that. I have run some Facebook ads uh, personally because I don't really live around any bigger cities. Um, I don't do a whole lot of Facebook ads, but in my opinion, you should be spending around 60 cents to around 85 cents per lead if you have the formula right, um, or you can go up to like $1.25 a lead. Um, just try and use some kind of keywords that basically you would use, you know, basically in your Craigslist ad, like cash for phones or I need cash. People basically who need money. You could even put uh, gambling. One of the keywords I've used is gambling because a lot of people who gamble need money, so they want to sell their phones. Um, yeah. You could put pawn. Kind of the keywords that basically people who would kind of be your regular customer base that might be searching for. Um, I wouldn't go crazy on Facebook ads. However, I am talking with a few people who kind of have this formula down for Facebook ads, and I'll probably be posting an update about that in the future or possibly a Facebook ads course. Um, but I definitely think Facebook ads are a good thing and it's just, they're a little bit harder to execute because of the fact that Facebook keeps constantly making changes. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you. Yeah, you bet, Brian. All right, guys. So I think, uh, unless anybody else has got a ton of questions, I think we will conclude the group chat. I will see you guys next Sunday at... 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll plan for that. So thank you guys for everybody for coming out. This is a good group chat and look forward to seeing you guys at the next chat.